What is up guys, you're amazing today, I'm back, I've got a new video for you and in this video we're going to be doing something a little bit different I know, I literally say that every single time but yeah, this is a new thing I want to try out basically where I read news articles that happen about YouTubers and just random stuff so yeah, this is the first one I'm going to do with it tell me what you think down below if you want me to do more of these just before we start guys, if you go to my Instagram, follow me right here my Instagram's right here, when we hit 20,000 subscribers on YouTube which should be soon, we're, we're getting quite close to it we're doing a massive follow spree on there so if you want to get a follow back, make sure you follow me there and hopefully you get a follow back when I do the follow spree so today we're looking at an article from The Guardian called Zoe Sugg, the Vlogger blame for declining teenage literacy. Right, you know, you know that girl in Brighton who, who sits in her room and films herself doing makeup? It's her fault your son's failing his GCSE English exam. Well, how does that work then? Right, so this article is written by someone called Zoe Williams. So let's have a look at her article and let's see why Zoe is the reason children are, are not very literate nowadays. If the words digital ambassador mean nothing for you, Vlogger will mean even less. For simplicity, Linzola is an author whose books, Girl Online, and two sequels have been named the nation's favourite. She's been blamed along with other peddlers of unchallenging fiction. Jeff Kinney of Diary of a Wimpy Kid for declining teenage literacy. Right, so, I want to know, how do they decide, like, how difficult a book is? Obviously, like, some books are easier to read, but it's not like Girl Online's a picture book, like, it's just like, this is an elephant. It's generally a storybook, like a narrative fiction book. You shouldn't take this personally as it was ghostwritten. Right. No, 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 no. This is where you're wrong, Zoe, okay? The first one was apparently ghostwritten. However, Zoe has come out and said it was not ghostwritten. It was just helped to be written. For a normal everyday person, it's very hard to write a book on their own. Just because they haven't got the qualifications of writing. Anyone can make a story, but actually making it flow, making it politically correct, like spelling wise, grammar wise, it's not that easy. That's what Zoe had help with, okay? It wasn't oh, like completely goes for it. Not that someone said, right, this is a book I wrote called Go Online. I want you to put that you've wrote it, Zoe. There you go, right? Just sign that. Yep. All right, cool. Here's your book. No, she actually put a lot of time into this. So, yeah, just to say she didn't put any effort into this is just like a bit rude, to be honest. In Zoe's most recent video, she's sifting through old photos of herself. I look so gothic, stroke emo here, she says. She sometimes seeks into third person, but it's unclear to me at least, but it is in the subject matter, the necessary, the gear chain. Right, guys, so as I'm in this video, I went to watch. Zoe's video where she's looking for old photos to see why she refers to herself in third person because it's not something that she usually does and as watching the video it came across to me that she doesn't refer to herself in third person she's literally not even talking about herself she's talking about a friend hence the reason Zoe says she's got Orlando Bloom on the wall because it's not her it's her friend so yeah if you're going to do an article about a YouTuber you should probably actually watch the video and not just skip to one bit and assume she's talking about herself look at me look at my friend's room I love this wait so how many I get I was 14 in the pictures I'm wearing a oh my god what's the brand of that hoodie it's Goldiver I can't remember but I'm wearing that she's got Orlando Orlando Bloom on her wall. My friend's room. It's got Orlando Bloom on her wall. Oh, well done. The form itself is the end point of narcissism, a stage of self enthrallment so complete that there is nothing too trivial to share. Someone doesn't like Zoella. Oh, here we go. Why does, why does every article do this? Literally, like, every article about a YouTuber says what they have to say. And then they decide to talk about how much they earn. It's just irrelevant. Like, literally, what does this have to do with how Zoella is apparently making the country illiterate? She earns 50,000 a month from her lifestyle channels. Now, honestly, that is a lie. With YouTube, it's just different every single month. Like, literally, one month you could earn that much, one month you could earn more, one month you could earn less. So literally, they're just making up stuff like the media. The media is actually just so fake. Like, I hate to be honest, people like, like, oh, the media's just fake. But they literally are like, how can you just make up stuff and put it in articles? It's literally just to guess what you think she earns, but you've actually said that's what she earns. Obviously, us, like, young kids who, like, watch YouTube and understand it, it's not like a contract every single month. YouTubers get 50,000 a month. It all depends literally how many subscribers you get, how much watch time you get. So you'll get, like, old people reading this going, oh, yeah, that, that Zoe Sug girl, she sits in her room making videos and gets paid 50,000 pounds a month. I, I think I should start doing that. But realistically, it's, it's not that simple. It's so much work. I don't actually know how it's legal that these articles can actually publish this sort of stuff without any, like, physical evidence that they're telling the truth. But the depth of her fascination with herself is also rather rather alienated. Just because you make videos of yourself does not mean you're like self-obsessed. That literally means like, okay, so if you take a selfie, are, are you self-obsessed? If you have Facebook and look at other people's photos, are you obsessed with them? This, this article genuinely feels like it's an attack on Zoe. Like, what is the actual point of this article? Like, you literally mentioned at the start that Zoe's making the country's future illiterate, even though Zoe is one of the few YouTubers that actually promotes reading. It genuinely doesn't make sense. Like, Zoe has released three books. She's released a book club. Like, I could understand if it was someone like Pointless Blog, for example. Like, no offense, Alfie, like, I really like your videos. But, like, say the Pointless book was number one. So, yeah, obviously that's not very, like, challenging books. It's just mainly drawing activities. But Zoe's is actually a book, like a, a full-on novel. So I don't understand what your actual problem is with this. Like, you're genuinely just irrelevant. When Instagram feed is a straight three-way split between selfies, cakes, and things to buy, it's impossible to tell where the advert ends. I mean, it's not. It's just, if it says hashtag ad, it's an advert. If it doesn't, it's not an advert. How is that impossible? I secretly suspect her of being in an endorsement contract with the pug breed. Haha, <laughs> funny. Good joke. Yeah, that was a good one.
<laughs> banter. So then they just go on to about stuff that Zoe has done. It's like good, like generally they actually say good stuff about her. Um, they talk about what she's done with NCS, about how she beat Harry Potter with her book coming out, and just stuff she's done in like mainstream media. And then it just ends on like a profile of Zoella. Like, what was the point of that article? Like. I genuinely don't feel I've gained anything from that article, I just feel angry, like, I'm not gonna lie, it was a waste of my time reading. we